Hello and welcome to Jewellery Rescue. I'm Kat and I'm a girl on a mission to rescue and recycle the world's unwanted jewellery. So one of the questions that I get asked all the time is, how do I know if my jewellery is real silver? How do I know if it's solid or plated? And what do the markings mean? Well, fortunately, there are some simple techniques that you can do from home and I'm going to show you those in today's video so that you won't have to resort to a jeweller's appraisal or testing acids. So you're not going to need very much to get started um, with this. And in fact, you can get started right away, but these might help you a little bit. So one of the things that I would recommend is a jeweller's loop. And this is just a little magnifying glass that will help you to see the marks much clearer. I'd recommend one with a light, which will also help with that too. You might also want a high strength magnet and I will explain as we go into the video what that's useful for. And of course, if you're looking at silver, you might want to get yourself a silver cleaning cloth, which will help you to see the marks better and of course get the high shine back onto the silver as well. So I really hope that you find the video useful. Please do hit the like button if you do. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to see more content from me as well. OK, so first of all, let's have a look at this pair of silver earrings. These were a charity shop find of mine. And these are really easy to identify because there's a 925 just on the back there. Now, 925 is the mark for sterling silver. It means that for every thousand parts of metal, there are 925 parts of pure silver. And it's normally mixed with copper to form an alloy, but sometimes could be other metals too. So that's a really easy one to identify as sterling silver. This ring here was another charity shop find of mine and I was delighted when I got home to discover that not only does it have the 925 at the bottom here, it also has ALE. So that's the maker's mark and ALE is the maker's mark for Pandora actually. So I was quite pleased with that find. And I thought it would be useful to show you this one because there's another number on here as well, which is the size of the ring. So this one says 54 and that is a European ring size. So it doesn't mean anything about the metal, it's just to denote the size. Now, sometimes these 925 marks can be hidden away. So in this beautiful turquoise piece, it's actually hidden right inside the bale. I don't know easy it will be for you to see but it's just right in the middle there so it's always worth having a really good look around a piece you want to check the edges check the back and inside that bale if it's a pendant because they like to hide in there too now here's a little tricky one that i only discovered this week i've had this for quite a while and thought it was just a costume piece um, let's see, it's very black here. I thought that this was plating loss, but having had another look at it in the week, I've discovered an S925. So the S is for silver and then 925 for sterling. So silver over time does tarnish. That's what this black is. That will all need cleaning off and it will come back to a high shine then. I quite like it dark. I think it looks quite fun but I will probably eventually clean that all off and make it shiny again so that's one thing to look out for um, don't discount a piece because it's gone black like that it could be silver tarnish it could actually be a good thing so this is another pair of charity shop find earrings of mine now these don't actually have a mark on the back but they are here on hooks now Finding a 95 mark on a hook doesn't necessarily mean that the earring is also sterling silver. Um, I make earrings myself on silver plated findings and I put them onto a sterling silver hook because people prefer to have sterling silver in the ear. So it doesn't always mean that the earring itself is going to be sterling. Um, but years of experience tells me that these ones are and I love them. They remind me of little owls. OK, let's have another look at another piece that has mixed metals. Now, this again is a charity shop find and it has a lovely maker's mark down here. It says Lazaro. It says it's solid brass and then it also has the sterling mark. So instead of the 95, they've chosen to put sterling. So this part here is sterling silver. It needs a good clean and then it will be absolutely beautiful. 
one to look out for is alpaca mexico now these pieces will often say alpaca silver as well alpaca silver is not sterling silver um, it's a different metal alloy and it does look like silver it can be easily mistaken this vintage piece i think is really pretty but not sterling silver just to make you aware now if you're really lucky you might find a piece which has been fully hallmarked by the proper hallmarking assay offices this one sadly isn't a charity shop find of mine i was looking through my collection and i actually don't think i've ever found um, a fully hallmarked piece as a charity shop find sadly um, this is a bangle that was given to me as a gift and this set of marks is what we would call a full set of English silver hallmarks. So this mark here, the JPK, is the maker's mark. And this was made by James King. It comes from the James King Gallery down in St. Ives. Beautiful shop if you're ever down in Cornwall. Then we've got the 925 here for sterling, followed by the anchor. Now the anchor shows you where it was hallmarked and that's called the assay office and this one was hallmarked in Birmingham they have an anchor don't ask me why it is an anchor I think it was a random choice and then the walking line here shows that it's English sterling silver and then there is a date stamp now these are really handy because you can look up when your piece was made and this letter Q here is from 2015 now you can buy um, a pocket guide or a full encyclopedia of marks or you can search on the internet. I'll drop some links in the description below for the hallmark guides. Um, but if you're just using an internet search, you can search for silver hallmark Q and it will show you all of the Q marks. You can select by the assay office and it will show you all the Q marks. They're all in slightly different fonts styles so you can tell which year yours was from. And this one, as I said, is 2015. Now, sometimes you might come across a piece which you think is silver, but it doesn't have any marks. So this one I bought at a car boot sale in the summer. I paid 50p for it and it was just on a very simple leather necklace, I think. Um, and there are no markings on it anywhere. I've had a really, really good look at it. It was quite dark when I picked it up and I just had a feeling that it was sterling. So be interested to know if you're an expert if you disagree with me, but I feel that this piece was probably made in some kind of silver workshop, you know, maybe a day type course that somebody has made it themselves. You can see where it's been rubbed with perhaps wire wool and it's had a very crudely put on jump ring in the top there. You can see it's not been stamped. This is, looks like it's been hand cut. So I think once you've been looking at silver pieces and you get some more experience of it over the years, you'll start to see that is silver, that's not silver, that's plated, that's solid. Um, experience will be your guide. Now, I mentioned earlier the magnet. So this is a high strength magnet. Um, they're inexpensive and they're quite a handy tool. So sterling silver generally is not magnetic because it's usually um, alloyed with copper which is also not magnetic so if I put this magnet on here there's no that's just me tapping it there's, there's no reaction at all to the magnet um, which is another indicator that it could well be sterling silver the only way to really know is if I did an acid test on it I don't like to have acids in the house because I have young children and also I'm very clumsy um, but I feel I'm 99% sure that this is sterling silver. But if I wanted to know for absolute sure, if I wanted to sell it on, for example, then I would need to do an acid test or take it to a jeweller's and have it acid tested. Um, but the magnet is always my first go to. Now, I also wanted to show you a couple of other pieces that are not marked, that are not magnetic and that are not sterling silver. So if I roll my magnet over these, oh, hold on, that one is magnetic. And this one has magnetic jump rings because I put silver plated jump rings on the top. But the metal on this one, this main metal here is pewter. 
and the metal on the hoops on these is surgical steel. Now I wanted to show you these because those actual, those parts of the metal are not magnetic. So it might trick you into thinking that they're sterling silver. What I would encourage you to do is just keep looking at your pieces, looking at the markings, looking at things that you know are made of other metals and really get to know the difference in the colour between them. So if we look at this pewter piece here a bit more close up, it's a very dull metal. It's very dark in comparison to the silver. Do you see that? I know it's subtle and it's probably harder to see it on the camera, but it's a much darker metal and it won't polish up with a cleaning cloth. I could go at this. It, it won't go shiny silver like that with a cleaning cloth. And again, the surgical steel is quite a cold metal, a cold looking grey. You see it doesn't sparkle like the sterling. So I thought that might be helpful as well. And if, if you've got pieces in your jewellery box that you know that are made of surgical steel or with surgical steel hooks or with pewter, then you can do some comparisons yourself and get a bit more used to it. I also wanted to put in a little caveat about the magnet that if you have a necklace with a spring clasp or a lobster clasp, it will attract the magnet. And that's because of the spring that's inside the clasp. So this is a sterling silver necklace and it has 925 marks all over the clasp. That's another place to look for them here. You see them just there. Sometimes they're on the ring itself, on the clasp itself. I think on this one it's on both actually. But yeah, don't be fooled by the fact that that part of the clasp is magnetic. That doesn't that will be the same on a sterling one and on a non-sterling one. OK, so one caveat with all of that, with looking at your markings, is that unfortunately there are sometimes fakeries out there. So anybody can buy a 925 stamp. In fact, I've got one here on my desk right in front of me because I make sterling silver wire wrapped rings and I like to stamp them with the 925 mark to show my buyers that they are sterling. There is no requirement for a full hallmark until the silver piece weighs more than 7.78 grams. And that's actually, it doesn't sound like very much, but in a piece of jewellery, um, it is a fair amount. So anybody could buy these 925 stamps and stamp it onto things. And I just wanted to show you this piece, which um, was an unfortunate eBay purchase of mine. It's stamped in there as S925. But unfortunately, all of my instincts told me when it arrived that it was not solid. And it's actually turned out that the seller was selling fakes on the Internet. So whilst I've told you how to look for all the marks, you do have to just be aware that there are some pieces out there that will be fakes. But that should be the exception rather than the main rule. And as I said, once you get into looking at these in more... Uh, more frequently and getting more used to it, you'll get a feel yourself before you've even found the mark for whether it's silver or not. So lastly, I thought that we would look at a silver plated piece. Now this beautiful antique spoon I picked up recently in a charity shop um, just to spoon my beads out of a, of a bowl because I thought it would be a beautiful way of doing that. And I could see that it had a set of marks on the back I didn't know what they were in the shop. It was very inexpensive, but I wondered if it might be silver plated because you can see it's about 100 years old and um, it's kept its look pretty well. And I wasn't quite sure whether this was plating loss here or whether it was um, tarnish. Could be either. So I did a bit of research when I got home. It's amazing what you can find with some searching on the Internet. Um, and I managed to find that the maker here... Uh, this mark here, the GEHK, was a maker's mark. I can't tell you off the top of my off the top of my head what his name was, but I managed to find him. And this mark here, I then managed to find a, a better example of it on another piece of his, a photo of another piece of his online. And it says EP EP along the top NS. I know. You can't, even with the jeweler's loop, it's actually quite hard to read that. So I don't expect you to see it on the camera, but it does say EPNS. And that stands for Electroplated Nickel Silver. 
which means that this piece is um, a base metal that has been plated with silver. So it's not a full silver hallmark, it doesn't bear the lion mark on it anywhere or an assay office. It's actually telling us that it is silver plated. And you might find on other silver plated pieces like jewellery, you might find an SP mark um, or S plated. Um, if there's any kind of combination of letters that you don't recognise, just search it online because there's a wealth of information that will tell you what they stand for. You can't always find maker's marks, which is slightly frustrating. Sometimes you'll find a piece and it's got um, initials on it or a logo that you can't find, but it's always worth looking and it's really good fun to try and find out. So I really hope that that's been helpful. I would love to know your finds. Um, if you have any questions about marks that you found that you're having trouble identifying, of course, pop those in the comments as well. I'd love to help if I can. And please don't forget to subscribe and come back for more content and watch my next video. See you in the next one.